Distinguished participants, dear guests, I would like to welcome each and every one of you. Throughout the meeting, we will provide simultaneous interpretation service. Tercüme modülünü ekranın altındaki zoom araç çubuğunda görebilirsiniz. You can see the interpretation icon from the toolbar below. Please choose English, Arabic or Turkish to be able to follow the interpretation in three different languages. If you have any problems using the interpretation module, please make sure that your Zoom application is up to date and we will be providing you information for using the chat box. If your Zoom application is out of date, Please leave the session, follow the instructions, update your Zoom application and come back again, logging back again. So please keep yourselves muted and keep your camera off throughout the meeting. And if you have any technical problems, please reach us, the Serenus team, using the chat box. Have a fruitful meeting. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we have quite a packed uh, program agenda. So uh, without losing any time, uh, I will give the floor uh, to uh, Anir Chaudhry, uh, Senior Policy Advisor from, from UNDP Bangladesh, uh, to deliver uh, his opening speech. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ezgi. Uh, colleagues, from Turkey, uh, respected uh, President Representative UNDP, Turkey, uh, respected uh, DRR of uh, uh, UNDP Bangladesh, uh, colleagues from UNDP country office, uh, UNDP Bangladesh country office, and uh, colleagues from uh, the two governments and uh, other organizations partners. Uh, if we look at the global scenario of refugees, we're talking about uh, 82 million and growing. And uh, of them, 26 million are refugees and uh, 20, 20, 20 million or so under the UNHCR mandate. If you look at the scenario, uh, one of the largest uh, refugee population, 3.7 million, uh, and 92% uh, from Syria, the Syrian refugees. And the number globally is actually increasing. And there are estimates that by 2050, we may have and some astronomical numbers that we have seen that potentially 500 million displaced people around the world. So that's an astronomical number in the next 30 years or so. So a, a huge problem that we have in our hands. Uh, in the context of Bangladesh, uh, we have uh, had uh, more than 1 million stateless Rohingya uh, population from Myanmar. Uh, and uh, most of them uh, are not literate even. So the, the context is quite different in Bangladesh, but uh, as we have started working with the displaced population in Bangladesh, we are, uh, we are very happy to work with uh, displaced population in, in, in Turkey as well. Uh, the response is changing from humanitarian to development recently. So uh, previously what used to happen was it's been a humanitarian response, but what we are seeing as the aid supporting humanitarian response is dwindling uh, for various reasons. Uh, COVID is one of them. And also uh, aid in general is, is, is dwindling. So we need to look at alternatives uh, for supporting the the displaced population and refugees around the world. Uh, and that's where we're looking at livelihood-based options. And of the livelihood-based options, we have been looking at whether uh, digital work is an option that's available. And we, in Bangladesh, have looked at two forms. One is uh, digital commerce, so e-commerce basically, so where the displaced population uh, produce uh, goods and those goods are sold overseas. So that's one option. And the second option is uh, use of uh, uh, digital labor, basically. So essentially freelancing of various kinds 
uh, the digital labor platforms that have emerged uh, across the across the globe. Uh, for instance, uh, freelancer.com, fiverr.com. So a lot of digital work platforms have emerged. So what we started looking at is whether uh, we could connect to these digital platforms uh, as a as a as a on ramping, as we say, uh, for the displaced population, and that's the work that we are very pleased and honored to to be launching in Turkey. In Bangladesh, the focus has been mostly e-commerce because uh, digital work platforms require a level of literacy and education that was not available in the context of Bangladesh. But in the context of Turkey, with the Syrian population, we actually have uh, the requisite amount of literacy and in many cases, digital literacy. So that's what uh, we're, we're, we're launching. And what we have seen is that uh, the emergence of gig economy, uh, where uh, uh, workers, and I'm not talking about displaced population, I'm talking about general population, and they are also getting more and more interested in doing gig economy, doing short-term work uh, over digital platforms. And in the case of displaced population, this is the exact paradigm that we are going to mimic uh, by connecting them with digital work platforms that are globally available. So uh, 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 I'm happy to uh, talk about the Dukan platform. Uh, it's a single point solution connecting supply and demand. Uh, demand driven supply, I think is very important. So uh, in a lot of the cases, what happens is uh, we create skills uh, based on a scenario that is not often connected to the demand. So I think uh, what we will see in the Dukan platform is that we understand the global demand of the skills need, uh, develop the right skills in the Syrian refugees in Turkey, and they will then uh, get connected to the demand side uh, through the global digital work platform. And the Dukan platform will connect the supply to the demand that exists uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the many. Uh, uh. Can you hear me still? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Microphone is. Yes, of course. Perfect. Yes. Uh, so, what we hope to see is that this Dukan platform is going to be a trailblazer, uh, is going to uh, blaze new trails. It's actually going to break new ground in terms of how the displaced population can get integrated with the digital world of work uh, through the Dukan platform. So in that respect, I think uh, the Dukan platform is going to uh, be a demonstration for the rest of the displaced population around the world, rest of the refugee population around the world, and uh, the journey is starting from Turkey. So we're very honored and uh, uh, pleased to be part of the journey. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Anish. Um, just uh, logistical, <laughs> again, uh, information. Uh, please, uh, can uh, our Arabic uh, speaking interpreter could share information how to use the interpretation uh, module uh, on the chat box. Thank you very much. And thank you, uh, Anir, for providing the, the background on uh, why we are doing this and how we want to, uh, how we can support uh, Syrian refugees in Turkey with your valuable partnership. Uh, I will give the floor uh, to Ms. Van Nuan uh, from UNDP Bangladesh, uh, Deputy Resident Representative. Please, Ms. Nuan. Thank you. I guess there's a little bit problem here. Jisong, are you there? Can you help us with connecting? Yes, I can listen. Yes, of course. I can listen. What kind of a technical problem are we facing now? Um, I can't. Yeah, we can hear this. 
rereading for the miss. Şey, kanal e, çalıyorum. Kanal seçimi yapılmış mı soruyoruz. Um, miss Van Nguyen, could you select the interpretation? Could you select the English from the interpretation module from the below section? Hello, Eski. So, Miss um, uh, Van is having an internet connection problem. I just uh, talked to her uh, very soon. So, okay. we can uh, go ahead. Okay. And... okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry for this interruption. So, Miss Louisa Winton, I would like to give you the floor. <laughs> Our resident representative from UNDP Turkey Country Office. Please. Thank, thank, thanks so much, Eski, and, and welcome, dear colleagues. Dear friends from Bangladesh, from the UNDP world, and our colleagues from the UN uh, Tech Technology Bank, uh, and above all, our, uh, our friends and colleagues from the uh, representation of uh, the Syrian refugee community, at whom this uh, this new initiative is, is is oriented. It's a real pleasure to speak on behalf of UNDP today and to take part in the launching of this uh, innovative Dukan. A solution platform, digital platform for uh, job creation. And at the start, I'd really like to thank not just our partners in UNDP Bangladesh and the Migrant Nation Foundation, but also uh, the government of Japan, which has uh, helped to make this possible uh, through its uh, generous funding of the COVID-19 uh, response uh, program here in Turkey. Um, as has been mentioned already today, you know, we are, we are very pleased to be applying new digital tools to uh, to the challenges that we're facing in a world where displacement is, uh, as, as Anir has mentioned, displacement is such a, a uh, unfortunately, such a uh, widespread phenomenon. And uh, this is something actually we were engaged in even before COVID, but COVID has really driven home the point that, you know, digital, uh, digital technologies can divide people. There is very clearly a digital divide between those who have access to the digital tools and those who don't, but also that the, digital tools can bridge divides and serve as an important uh, channel for inclusion of those who are risk on the risk of being left behind, as we say, in the sustainable development goals. And I think we're seeing that in miniature in this, uh, in this uh, Zoom call today, that uh, once we are able to bridge the technology challenges of access to the tools, that we can encompass a much larger world of, of uh, partners and counterparts in our initiative in the format of one webinar. So, you know, as, as uh, Anir was saying, you know, we are increasingly seeing the need to apply development tools as a response to displacement and, and the, the high numbers of refugees who are stuck in quite protracted situations to return to their homelands. Um, and really the creation of jobs and livelihoods is the core of that of that de development response. Um, so here I would really like to, to salute the Turkish government for ensuring that there's a policy framework in place where jobs can be created for refugees and people in uh, displaced uh, status. And as has been said, the numerical challenge for Turkey is really quite dramatic. You know, Turkey, as we know, hosts around 4 million of that 82 million uh, displaced and refugee population globally near mentioned at the start. And, and we see in looking closer at the numbers that while there is a clear possibility for people to find jobs, the Turkish government has provided. So there are opportunities to achieve self-reliance and inclusion in the community that the scope and the, the breadth and depth of the challenge are quite dramatic. That even before COVID, we have around 2 million of that 4 million population living below the poverty line. And although many of the refugee community are working, really the huge majority of those with jobs, uh, 900,000 people in all, are working in the informal sector, where work as we know is precarious and conditions are often quite unfavorable. We've seen that COVID has made this situation even more precarious with 83% of refugees saying that they have experienced a deterioration in their livelihood because of COVID and 50% saying that they are having a hard time making ends meet. So more than ever, we need to be able to tap new ways of uh, finding ways to connect refugee and displaced populations with job opportunities. So um, this platform we see is, as has been said, 
you know, one big experiment in trying to use digital tools to enable so often quite excluded people to tap livelihoods. Um, we also see, as Anir has mentioned, you know, a population that is especially suited for this type of opportunity. You know, not only are education and liter literacy levels much higher, but also we see that over the years that many of the government and donor uh, funded uh, support programs have involved IT training, uh, IT literacy skills courses, and that there are now more than 37,000 uh, Syrian students at university also who are gaining skills that may be used in this way. You know, and, and obviously what was very intriguing for me about this initiative is the sense that there is unmet demand channeled through Bangladesh for Arabic uh, speaking uh, skilled professionals to tap into and meet um, from the Turkish population. So we are re really hoping that this platform will not just serve as a way to, to enable that. Uh, can, demand, I, can I um, ask something? Uh, maybe after I'm finished would be good. Is that okay? Thank you. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that not only for that supply and demand to uh, to reach each other, but also for both of those categories to grow so that we can encompass a larger and larger number of, number of people, you know, and through livelihoods help people to retain and expand their human dignity. Um, we're still at the beginnings, obviously, and we'll hear today about not just the positives, but also some of the challenges we're, we're facing, including the need for, I think, an improved regulatory framework to ensure that we protect people using this uh, platform from exploitation. But really, it's an exciting initiative to be involved in. It's very uh, encouraging to see such good cooperation between the Bangladesh UNDP team the Turkey, and the Turkey UNDP team. And uh, to really thank, once again, our uh, Japanese uh, donors for their kind support that has made this all possible. So. I'm very much looking forward to the discussion and thank everyone for joining us and bearing with the, some of the, the issues we have because we are quite a multilingual meeting today. So thanks very much and back to you, Eski. Thank you, Ms. Vinton. <laughs> uh, thank you for your speech. Uh, are we able to uh, receive a speech from Ms. Van uh, Nguyen from UNDP Bangladesh? Okay. <laughs> yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, Jeremy, yes. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, distinguished guests. guests. Uh, good afternoon uh, from where I am. Uh, especially, I would like to thank uh, UNDP Turkey for extending all their support uh, uh, at this juncture. I'm very excited uh, today to be present here. Uh, it was a simple concept that came from UNDP Bangladesh office that uh, digital work can be done by anywhere sitting any uh, uh, sitting anywhere and from uh, any place if the connectivity is ensured and if the necessary tools are there so we tried to develop a first version of this platform which we are uh, now uh, testing in turkey a large uh, depressed population displaced population is in Turkey right now. We have uh, practically tried to talk with them to find out what are the problems and how we can solve them. So the core two problems that we found out was not finding work. The core problem is how to get, uh, you know, uh, repatriate the money, how to get your livelihood uh, related to your work, how you get payment. So in this platform, we tried to solve that issue uh, with partners uh, we have partnered up with a company called remote which can receive funds from anyone in over 100 countries and territories and we hope with this platform we are setting an example uh, what can be done for digital livelihoods for people all across for displaced people all across the globe uh, thank you for this opportunity and back to you uh, UNDP colleagues in Turkey Thank you, Jamie, for covering. Uh, okay, then, um, thank you for all the opening speeches. Um, I think we can move on with the, the video, the promotional video that we have uh, for Dukyan Freelance Working Platform um, to better tell you uh, what is it about and how to use it. So, 
Siz gin. Back in a new social approach to freelancing. The Syria crisis has forced thousands of Syrian professionals with digital skills to leave their country. Also, many young Syrians attended ICT courses in Turkey and built a career in software development, design, translation, editing, content development, social media management and many highly demanded digital work lines. Moreover, Syrians taking computer classes could transform into freelance working opportunities such as data entry and data cleaning. Freelance work could provide opportunities for women and persons with disabilities with basic or advanced computer skills. But, all these skills need to meet with the local, regional and global market. Freelance economy continuously expands each year, even more with the COVID-19 pandemic. Between 20-30% of workforce in developed companies are engaged in freelance or independent work. Hiring managers expect a 168% increase in the amount of work done by flexible talent in the next 10 years. Bakken is established by UNG Turkey, UNG Bangladesh and Migrant Nation Foundation's joint efforts to open a new door for Syrian refugees in global digital markets. How does it work? Dakin performs duly as a freelance platform by itself and as an aggregator platform of widely used global freelancing sites. Worldwide known freelancer sites such as Fiverr, Guru and Piotopaha are already agreed to collaborate with H. Dakin. Clients all around the world can direct their projects to find talented Arabic-speaking professionals. Widely used payment gateways will guarantee safe, secure and easy payment both for companies and freelancers. Dakin advisors follow up on the projects and supervise the freelancers to ensure the task's timely and successful delivery. The chat module allows smooth communication between the freelancer and client. Syrians living in Turkey can register to the platform as freelancers by generating profiles. Join Dakin and be part of an initiative of people on the move that will grow from local to global. Thank you very much. Uh, now uh, we will have a presentation about the platform uh, in more details. And I'm now inviting Ece and Jisan from UNDP Turkey and Bangladesh to deliver their presentation. Thank you. Hello Ece, can you hear? I just um, uh, yes. Um, so, start. Yes, we can start now. Yes, would you like to start, just um, uh, Yes, thank you. Uh, hello, thank you, colleagues. I'm from uh, UNDP Bangladesh. So uh, thank you, UNDP Turkey, for inviting us in this launching ceremony. So I just want to share that um, in uh, last year, we have visited Turkey with a very warm welcome from UNDP Turkey and the colleagues uh, over there. And we have actually come up with an idea to replicate one of the very unique e-commerce platform in Turkey, which is uh, already running in Bangladesh and some other country very well. So after coming, uh, uh, after going back to Bangladesh, we have all faced and uh, uh, pandemic and lockdown situation and we kind of like stuck so we couldn't actually progress with the e-commerce platform much but what but we have seen an opportunity uh, our UNDP colleagues shared that all the livelihood options and workings are paused here uh, especially for the refugees they could, uh, cannot work in different places so we see an opportunity that uh, it will build a uh, platform for oh. aggregator platform a digital working platform with Migrant Nation Foundation, we see a very nice fit in Turkey to replicate this platform in Turkey. And uh, as uh, I want to share that Bangladesh is a, a world largest, second largest freelancing provider in the world. So what we do, there are thousands of freelancers, they work in Bangladesh uh, and serve in the global market and they bring lots of remittance in Bangladesh. And also now they are having a very good decent livelihood in our own country. So we suggested that why not we also replicate this platform, uh, platform for Turkey and we make opportunity for the refugees people 
to work in home where they can make decent livelihood working digitally and actually you can work in different country usa canada but just sitting in your home so that is a very uh, excellent uh, opportunity we see and we found a very warm welcome by UNDP Turkey. So, and now you can see that today we come up with the platform where UNDP Turkey has bring this platform with UNDP Bangladesh to provide a very decent livelihood. Second slide, please. So we have seen that globally there is a $347 billion market already emerged uh, in a freelancing market in a digital economy where we have seen that uh, you can uh, earn around like 21 dollar working from your home just uh, like doing there are different variety of works you can do and there is a very standard sort of payment you can get and we have seen there are different area like web designing graphic designing programming uh, and many more areas you can work with and the hourly rate for uh, this work is very standard. We have seen that now the show, uh, now people are using the social media as well to promote this sort of like freelancing work they can provide, they can do from their home. Second slide, please. Next slide, yeah. So here is an, uh, uh, is an uh, presentation. You can see that there are different area of work you can get involved where you can see uh, the payment is really standard and very high in many cases so you can do the customer support center sort of like support activities uh, from your home and earn around like 15 dollar in per hour or there are uh, many areas like graphic designing it is uh, the standard payment is like 19 dollar per uh, hour and in project management it is like 28 dollar so the uh, depending on the work type, the hourly rate and payment is very interesting. Next slide. So we have seen, uh, you don't have to have like lots of uh, formal education and degree for this, but we have seen that uh, those who are working in the freelancing sector, around 57% of them, they have a bachelor degree or a certificate degree uh, from different universities. And we have seen still 19% of the graduates uh, from high school, they can also work in this platform. And there are around like 24% uh, those who are in a master degree or PhD there. Uh, so it is also, it is mainly need the skills of people to uh, do work in this area, deliver work, rather than having some sort of like formal degree. But this is the common scenario. So uh, the next slide uh, is on uh, the opportunity in Turkey. Next slide, please. So I would like to request my colleague, AJ, uh, to share about uh, this potential in Turkey. Thank you, thank you, Jisan. So uh, regarding all the valuable information Jisan shared with us, uh, we would like to assess the potential in Turkey in terms of the uh, bringing Syrian refugees together with the, this an uh, ever-growing uh, global digital market. And uh, it is not surprised us this, uh, to see there is a great potential in Turkey because uh, we know that there are many Syrian professionals uh, who are already engaged with the uh, digital uh, works, digital projects living in Turkey. Uh, and uh, the uh, community centers uh, providing services for refugees and the public education so uh, centers also uh, offering some courses to build uh, skills on the ICT and the basic computer use. Uh, and uh, there are almost uh, 40,000 uh, university students uh, in Turkey, uh, Syrian university students in Turkey. Uh, some of them are uh, building their education on the software development and the computer engineering. Uh, so they will continue to uh, work in the digital market uh, as their career plan. And also the remaining students who uh, are receiving their education from different departments also have a quite good uh, comments in the uh, digital skills, including the ICT skills. Uh, so we see the whole this population as a great uh, potential to enter the uh, digital market. 
uh, and also there are some uh, there is a demand uh, for the Arabic speaking freelancers from especially uh, from the Arabic speaking countries and the Gulf countries. Uh, as Jason mentioned, uh, some of these uh, required skills are the uh, some advanced skills like software development or web design, and also. Uh, many of the clients need some very basic skills, the uh, freelancers with very basic skills like the data cleaning and voiceover. Uh, and our platform can also play an aggregator role uh, merging with the other uh, freelancing platforms uh, who have difficulties to reach out the uh, Arabic speaking freelancers. Uh, and also, uh, to when we are building our uh, platform, we uh, conducted a series of workshops uh, to find out what the Syrian freelancers challenge uh, while they are working in the freelance market. And uh, we got quite good feedbacks uh, from them. So uh, there are uh, Arabic speaking freelancers from other companies like Egypt, and they are uh, offering very low, uh, hardly prices. Uh, for the uh, projects, uh, this is a quite uh, challenge because uh, they cannot receive uh, enough payment uh, when we uh, think about the effort they pay. Uh, the, our wages are uh, quite low due to the uh, high competition. And also some payment gateways are not uh, allowed to work in Turkey like PayPal and Skrill. So even if they can access the projects, they cannot receive their payments. This is also one of the uh, most important uh, challenges. Uh, due to the size of the freelancer community in the global platforms, the uh, processes uh, take too long to submit the proposals and there is a, a high competition uh, due to the number of the freelancers in a um, global uh, say similar projects uh, like Fiverr or the other platforms. Uh, some of the platforms are uh, demanding the subscription fees from the uh, freelancers. This is also uh, limit the participation of the Syrian freelancers to these platforms. Uh, and also some platforms only offering projects for the only very highly skilled uh, individuals, but uh, on the demand side, we see uh, there is also a demand for the basic computer skills, like I mentioned, the data cleaning or voiceover. Uh, and also some freelancers faced with the, some credentialing uh, problems. So uh, feeding by these feedbacks from the freelancers, uh, we finished our platform. Uh, the open source software is developed by the Migrant Nation Foundation uh, and you can access to our platform from the decan.work uh, link. So uh, the platform originally uh, developed in English, but uh, later we uh, localized it to uh, Arabic and Turkish. So platform uh, Dukan is now available in all three languages. And we also uh, conducted a test run with uh, 24 freelancers and a client to test uh, the platform features to be sure it is ready to use. Uh, Jisan, uh, I would like to uh, invite you back for the uh, workflow modality. Thank you. Uh, so in the chat box, I have seen that many of our uh, distinguished colleagues has uh, want to know that how this will work. So this is basically an aggregator platform. Uh, we have uh, connected many uh, freelancing platforms in this um, uh, in this platform, like People Per Hour, Guru, Fiverr and many more will join in this um, in this platform so there is like two modalities one is we are bringing a different uh, freelancing work from these platforms and also there is another modality which is there are many multinational companies they will be directly posting the jobs in this platform so for the facilitation we have uh, created many managers in our platform who will be supporting the freelancers to uh, assign different job and uh, get also de get the delivery of the jobs. So uh, in those platform, the work will be coming to uh, the Dukan platform we have created. And from the Dukan platform, it will go to the freelancers, the refugees people. And after that, uh, the freelancer will submit the task in Dukan platform. And that will also go to the uh, freelancing platform or the direct uh, the job providers those who have given us the work. Next slide, please. 
So this is another uh, very common question that how we are going to uh, send the payment. Because we have seen in Turkey that there are many refugees, uh, we, uh, they are connected with us, but they are not uh, have, they don't have any formal sort of uh, bank account or maybe um, uh, they are not connected with the mobile financials. So that's why what, what uh, we partner up with the remote, uh, there is a local uh, Turkish payment platform. So we will directly uh, send the money to the remote uh, platform and the remote platform will uh, they will distribute the money uh, in Turkey to our beneficiaries, those who will be working in this uh, platform. So uh, in this case, so you don't have to have any formal sort of like international uh, bank account or maybe payment gateway or credit card uh, or maybe PayPal account, rather you can just uh, connect it with the remote and get your payment locally. Thank you. Back to AJ. Uh, thank you, Jisan. Uh, so I would like to conclude our presentation uh, with our final objective. Uh, we aimed it to achieve a self-sufficient platform uh, that eliminates the challenges and obstacles uh, the refugees encounter while accessing to digital livelihood opportunities. Uh, and uh, at our final aim, we would like to uh, hand over this platform uh, when we ensure its sustainability. Uh, and we have a surprise agenda of the replication of e-commerce platform that Jisan mentioned in the beginning of the presentation. Uh, so we would like to open the gates of the uh, digital market uh, for refugees for achieve decent livelihood opportunities. Thank you. Thank you, Ece and Jisan, uh, for the presentation. Uh, I also see many people are engaging through the chat platform and we will have a Q&A session. So at this stage, let's not take the questions, but please uh, uh, continue sharing your uh, thoughts and questions. So we will be able to uh, answer all of them. Uh, I would like to invite uh, right now uh, Miss Sonia Bashir Kabir, uh, from UN Technology Bank. Uh, she kindly agrees to uh, join us uh, today uh, and she will uh, give her insights and experiences, just quite impressive, uh, with us on the freelance market. Ms. Bashir. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for inviting me. It's an honor. In the interest of time, I would just like to make a few points. Uh, firstly, congratulations to all the parties that have um, contributed to such a brilliant platform. Um, overall, if I was to give a global perspective, uh, the global freelance platform market is projected to boom at a compounded annual growth rate of 15.3% during the next five years. And we're seeing that worldwide, the freelance market platforms are going to grow because companies globally, thanks to COVID, are going to go for a hybrid model approach where the full-time employees will always be balanced by the outsourced model, which is in a total cost of ownership, it comes to be uh, become much cheaper. So in that respect, what, what we're trying to address to solve the problems of the refugees or those that would not have been given work is the platform has been built globally and then the local platform, Dukan, is going to take this much forward. The capabilities to expedite reliance on freelance platforms is going to be key to be a, a very successful and recognized brand to allow others to come in and, and contribute. Um, and we've seen the success of startups um, in, in work, uh, these focus uh, to bolster growth has given lots of positive results. So we are very, I'm um, personally, and I think professionally, this is a, a great initiative, which we think will move, um, you know, uh, from a platform breakdown by type, if we look at it, will move from cloud-based to web-based and web-based is the most widely used type which takes about 80% of the total sales in the past history of, of what's been happening in outsourced platforms. Um, the freelance platforms, uh, if you look at by data by application from a technology perspective, are really used by large enterprises um, and SMEs, and then the freelancers contribute. So we're very excited about opening those markets from uh, this collaboration. And the, the country um, analysis for the freelance markets have uh, the typical, uh, the big suspects, the Northern America, United States, Canada, Europe, and then going into other parts of Europe, followed by a little bit in the Asia Pacific. So um, overall, I think there is, there is a huge potential. If I was just to give an idea of the worldwide market, it is expected to be a thousand 
a million dollars. If you can understand that compute that I think the, the platform couldn't have been built at a better time because we are very ready to get people on and contribute and see success. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Kabir, for the encouragement as well. <laughs> we see the potential. And we would like to also uh, hear um, the experiences uh, from the field, actually, uh, actual freelancers, the companies that are working with freelancers, and uh, from our partner, uh, INGEV, who are already working with Syrian freelancers and Syrian refugees, entrepreneurs, and Syrian on enterprises uh, in the field. So uh, I would like to give the floor to Karim Kasab from INGEV uh, to share his uh, views and uh, recommendations. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ezia. Thank you very much. Um, um, first, I would like to extend my uh, gratitude for the opportunity and uh, say welcome to all the attendees uh, we have with us today. Uh, my name is Karim. I'm a project coordinator with INGEV Tur Turkey, and I will be uh, talking about um, some of the uh, challenges we, we and opportunities we encounter um, 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 in our line of work um, uh, that are associated with the digital livelihood uh, in general, but with focus on Turkey. Um, Can you raise your voice, please, a little bit? Um, something um, about uh, the, the nature of the um, livelihood, digital livelihood. Um, um, it's, it's an ideal solution for um, Syrian refugees here in Turkey who are not able to access the, um, the labor market. Um, it's also a solution for um, anyone, uh, for students who are um, interested in gaining experience. Um, also for anyone who would like to uh, have a, a, a second income. Um, a, What's so important about this field is that it, it removed all um, 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 geographical borders between job seekers and employers from all around the world, which, is, which provides a, a, an immense uh, opportunity for um, um, job seekers for, uh, from all around the world. Um, now, if we will focus about Turkey and what we have seen in our, in our work, um, Turkey had attracted many Arab investors um, in, the, in the past few years. Um, we in Engev, we work with thousands of uh, small and medium-sized enterprises, mostly Syrians, uh, also Iraqis and other Arab nationalities. Um, usually these SMEs, um, they like to outsource some of, the, yeah, given their, the medium size of, or the small size of their operation, they like to outsource um, uh, some of the tasks uh, you know, within their within their companies, um, so um, and they rely heavily on on um, freelancers, um, which um, leads me to a point um, that this provide this new website, uh, this new platform will provide the opportunity for both the the, the job uh, seekers and the employers. Uh, to connect together um, and uh, um, 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 find a new um, ground to work together. Um, another thing I would like to highlight from our experiences is that um, um, many of the majority of the small and medium sized enterprises, they tend to um, lean more toward um, working with the, um, with the same experiences, with the uh, previous experiences they had before. What I mean is, um, unlike big corporations, they, they don't tend to um, 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 run a quotation every time they want to hire a, a new service, which, um, which is also very important for, um, for um, freelancers working in Turkey, um, because it means that they can build a relationship with these, with these employers um, and have a long-term long -term, uh, um, um, uh, work with them. Um, speaking of the challenges, um, AJ covered most of it. Um, I, will, I, I don't want to uh, repeat what, what she had said, but most of what we encountered also is basically the language challenge, which, which is due to the fact that most of the platform, uh, platforms for freelancers are uh, mainly in English. And also the freelancers working uh, uh, in digital livelihoods, 
uh, this this whole sector is dominated by English speakers, and it's very difficult for um, Syrians to compete with the native English speakers, for example, uh, to for a job in, in, in US or, or or Canada or other parts of the world. So it's very important to um, 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 connect um, Syrian freelancers residing here in Turkey with actual clients operating within Turkey as well, uh, which I believe this this platform also um, uh, offers um, other challenges are uh, like as you said the low wages um, in in uh, in Turkey in general um, um, for freelancers um, and due to the competition within this uh, line of work um, freelancers are uh, tend actually to accept sometimes um, work condition even if it's uh, um, online um, to work for low wages just to be able to um, to uh, have an income, a stable income. Um, a payment method is also a bit of a problem in in um, uh, in Turkey. Um, the Dukan platform offers a, a quite quite a, a, um, a feasible solution for for this issue. Um, um, so. Lastly, I want to highlight something uh, for the freelancers. Still, it's um, some of the jobs um, are still out of reach for freelancers. I'm talking about jobs like uh, that requires a high level of skills, uh, such as web design, web design or programming. Uh, but in here, we have a, a, a great opportunity for um, Syrians who are uh, residing in Turkey. Um, because, and again, here we, we need to um, extend our gratitude to the Turkish government who, through their municipalities, they are running pro, um, many um, 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 trainings, um, uh, training programs for the Syrian refugees um, to enable them to have um, uh, income. Um, also, the civil society organizations um, within in Turkey are um, more focused uh, on uh, creating um, or let's say equipping these um, um, the Syrian uh, Syrians in Turkey with the skills they need to to have uh, to be able to work uh, in in uh, digital livelihoods. Um, that's that's uh, uh, most of the experiences we 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 encounter i don't want to take too much time so uh, i will i will uh, give you this the speech again that's good okay thank you karim thank you for your valuable inputs uh, and rightly set the, the context actually the, uh, for freelancers especially in turkey so uh, i would like to give the floor to uh, it's uh, a freelancer, actually, uh, Dana El Kassab, uh, to share her experiences. Thank you, Dana. Uh, 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 um, uh, I work as an interpreter, a freelance interpreter. I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong channel. Uh, so I am uh, a freelance interpreter. Uh, I used to. Uh, I've been working as a freelancer uh, even before uh, the remote or online uh, working. Uh, all of my work has been uh, as a freelancer. So today I will speak about the uh, benefits uh, of freelancing and uh, the benefits for that for women in specific. Uh, if I have time to do that. Uh, working as a freelancer uh, give uh, uh, flexibility for people, especially people who uh, are uh, fed up with the routine or the full-time job. Uh, of course, it depends on the nature of the work that you do. Uh, I worked as a freelancer. You have to be on that English channel. English from the globe. Can can everyone hear me? Uh, yes. We can we can hear you. Oh. And I'm the smile. Okay. And I'm the smile. Okay. 
فحسب طبيعه العمل اذا حس سو ات ديبندز اون ذا نيتشر اوف ذا ورك اي وركد از ان جورناليزم اند تيتشينج اند از ان انتربريتر از ا فريلانسر سو ات ديبندز اون ذا نيتشر اوف ذا ورك ذات يو دو سو يور ويك اند فور اكزامبل از نوت نيسيسيرلي ذا اند اوف ذا ويك ساتردي اور ساندي اند يو دونت جو اند كم ديورينج ذا راش اورز وين يو ار دوينج ات ديبندز اون ذا اجين از تو ذا ورك ذات يو دو يوسع الافاق يعرضنا لتجارب so freelancing uh, shows us uh, um, uh, widen our horizons because we are working with uh, different people we're not working with the same team with the same boss with the, in the same company we work in different companies and in different fields uh, in addition to that this also allows us uh, to uh, work in uh, a also in different geographies or people uh, who are from different geographies so it gives us uh, a lot of lessons and we can improve our skills as well uh, during the work uh, it's more challenging but at the same time it's more interesting uh, the um, financial uh, income is uh, open of course uh, it's not limited but it has also uh, a negative aspect so uh, of course it has to do with uh, how uh, 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 enthusiastic or uh, how good you are at work and at the same time it depends on the demand in the market uh, some uh, the uh, freelancer uh, can uh, find and uh, some time in his life for voluntary work or something uh, which is meaningful in life uh, other than just uh, making income uh, in life uh, for women in specific uh, for a long time i've been a working woman uh, for over 10 years before i uh, become a mother uh, five years ago but uh, despite uh, my passion in work i didn't want to choose between motherhood uh, and work or to give a priority to work over my family and raising up my daughters uh, so uh, here came uh, freelancing and online uh, freelancing uh, became uh, came became very useful for me when i work from home uh, at the time that is appropriate for me uh, so i don't have to be completely away from my passion to do the work i love uh, so when they uh, asked me to speak to this uh, webinar uh, i told them i am doing my job uh, while i am uh, a mother doing my motherhood uh, job so freelancing allows me to join meetings like that on zoom online and uh, i can uh, communicate i can do interpretation from home uh, at, at the same time i am taking care of my kids uh, in the breaks uh, while i'm doing uh, my job so this makes uh, uh, the freelancing uh, appropriate for women in particular Uh, with the other challenges or the other tasks that uh, they have. On the other hand, a flexibility in time sometimes means that you have more pressure. Uh, sometimes because sometimes we have seasonal work. For example, in interpretation, there are seasons where we have high demand on interpretation, and we have sometimes uh, conflicting uh, timing. And at the other times, we have uh, we, we have low demand, so we have sometimes that we don't have any. Uh, day off while uh, in other times we have long periods of uh, 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 of uh, of days off uh, the other uh, problem is that uh, you don't have a, a fixed uh, fee that you get or an income that you get so it means it needs you to manage your income or to have management for your income uh, to cover for the days that you don't have work uh, in uh, I think that uh, there uh, one of the problems that uh, this uh, freelancing faces is uh, the lack of uh, a legal framework uh, that uh, regulates the relationship between the uh, demander of the service and the provider of the service uh, well, here I mean the freelancer sometimes it uh, it is based on the uh, 
uh, the market price that is known, and this is sometimes uh, varies from one area uh, to another. Uh, one final point, and I hope I, I don't want to take so much time for, uh, of your time. Uh, for people who want to work as a freelancers, of course, people who feel that they need to be directed at uh, specific instructions and uh, a bill of the beginning of the uh, uh, working hours and the end of the working hours, they will face a problem in this, uh, in doing a freelancing. Uh, because they, such uh, people in freelancing, need to manage their time very properly, and to know the uh, how much time they need to do the uh, amount of work that uh, they have. And when you become a freelancer, the uh, time management becomes uh, very different uh, for you because you're not counting hours of uh, the job that you're doing, but rather you are. Uh, your time is ab about the tasks that you are finishing and the hour that uh, uh, becomes in indeed the 60 minutes that you have and how much time you do uh, during that hour and uh, you start to uh, measure your time with the uh, functions and tasks that you achieve uh, not only that you are spending certain hours at uh, the job and uh, and that makes you have more quality time in your free time because uh, you appreciate time better. Uh, so again, this requires better time management uh, to manage all of your life in order not to have uh, uh, so much pressure. Uh, you know. This also requires uh, skills uh, to make relations, public relations, and to market yourself. I believe uh, in the current time with the working online and the remote working, you need to have such a skills and you need to have the skills of using computers and working uh, uh, remotely. Uh, sometimes uh, also it's a, what puts you uh, in front of, uh, or able to work with a wider group of people around the world. And this includes uh, some challenges that are sometimes difficult to uh, deal with. But in general, uh, there are opportunities for improvement, development, and learning uh, in the field that you are doing. So the notion of working as a freelancer uh, gets away from only uh, making income uh, to become something that you are growing yourself, taking care of, because it's your own work and it's up to you uh, to satisfy the client and to come back to you to demand more of your services. So you have full responsibility for your performance and for providing a high quality service. I hope that I have given uh, a good idea about uh, freelancing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Donna. It's actually perfect because, I mean, everybody, I think, should know other than the digital skills, you need to also hold other professional skills to deliver quality results, which will bring more jobs I mean, in the freelance world. Thank you very much. So we will hear, uh, lastly, uh, Kamal uh, Bakur from Enva Media uh, as an actually client <laughs> working with freelancers. And please, Kamal, floor is yours. Thanks, Ezgi. Thanks to all of you. And I would like to thank the UNDP of, from Turkey and Bangladesh. And I would like to thank the uh, people of Japan for funding this uh, great project. And I would like to thank all the uh, participants in here. Uh, at first, let me introduce myself. I'm Kamal Bakur. I work as a digital services and marketing manager at Enva Media here in Istanbul. Uh, therefore, I have uh, a really uh, long experience with the freelancer. Uh, as a client, as uh, Ezgi has mentioned uh, before. First of all, I would like to talk about the digital transformation, that it's something we couldn't really avoid, and COVID-19 just speed it up. Uh, therefore, we can see the digital transformation is really uh, speeding up, uh, and therefore, we can see that the demand on digital services has increased. Uh, I believe that when we, when we say digital, uh, when we mention the digital world, we we can see that all the people work in digital sector. They prefer to work as freelancers. They don't prefer to, to come to offices and to work from offices and even to sign uh, a contract to be a full time uh, employee. Therefore, I can I can tell that the, the Dukan uh, platform is a great idea that uh, really made our 
uh, work easier as co as companies willing to uh, to hire people because whenever we want to to hire a freelancer we can just uh, go to the website and we can uh, search uh, and we can choose the 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 freelancer that it benefits uh, to our uh, goals and freelancing in general is actually ha has benefits to both the, the community and the companies because sometimes as a company you don't really need to hire a full-time employee because sometimes you have like a small project for like 10 days or a week that's therefore actually when, when you want a project uh, based employee uh, freelancing is a great thing for you, especially when you work in ICT, translation services, etc. Uh, other things I would like to uh, to mention in, in, in here, like when uh, uh, when you hire a freelancing, there's something uh, you, you fear you fear it actually, which is like of course you, you need to hire any uh, talented uh, freelancers, which is something uh, we can discuss. You look for the talent, but another thing I, I advise all freelancers to, to have, first of all, being responsive to the client. This is something very important and will make uh, your work uh, sustainable with this company because you, even if you are a free, freelancer, you would like to, to, to collaborate with the company for uh, not only for one project, maybe for a second project, third project, for a year as a freelancer. So being responsive will, will make your, your and the client, the company, uh, job easier. Also, being well disciplined, and I mean by well disciplined, all of us work as uh, we have deadlines for everything. That's why when we start to to uh, uh, when we start when we launch uh, any project, we we give a deadline a deadline, and uh, we have to finalize our work before this uh, deadline uh, before this deadline the, the due time. Uh, so these things, I think, all freelancers should care about because uh, this will make uh, your relation with the client uh, goes good. I think this is everything I have to mention uh, about the freelancing. And I believe that this website is really, this platform is is really great idea. I, I've experienced it, uh, this platform uh, and everything in, in this platform is really great. Uh, starting from uh, the, the way it works, the, the programming is very easy to apply, very easy to use for, from both sides, from the freelancer or from the company. So I would like to thank all of you again, and thanks for uh, hosting us today. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Kamal, for sharing the client's view. Uh, and also, I think it's important uh, to also consider the priorities of the, of the clients as well. Uh, while uh, doing your job. Uh, so uh, as you may remember, we couldn't be able to connect uh, to Miss Van Nuan from UNDP Bangladesh. Now she is here with us. So uh, <laughs> please, I'm sorry for her. This, <laughs> this internet sometimes separates <laughs> us, sometimes unites us. So <laughs> now we are ready. Please, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And my apologies for being dropped off. Today we are at the satellite office and then we have had so many uh, power cuts, basically. So uh, first I would like to say that um, I have been listening to that. So right after I, being, uh, I was dropped off and then finally managed to get uh, back again through the um, mobile connection. So I was able to listen to all the sharing. I was very impressed. Um, I also feel so much um, encouraging and thrilled to, um, to, to whatever we have been able to achieve so far. So this is a big congratulation for everyone who have been part of this uh, very important initiative. Um, I, I remember that, you know, I came from Vietnam and I remember that at some point when we had the uh, policy, government policy on, you know, supporting the migrants and, and at that point in time, you know, the government mindset of pupil mindset was very much looking at the um, uh, migrant as a burden, as a burden to the society. And, and, and one of the messages we try to convey um, is that migrant is not a burden, but migrant, migrant is an asset to the, to the um, society. 
And, and, and I think that that message is also very true uh, to, to, to our refugees population. Um, so, and, and I'm so glad that I see so many of you are joining this uh, launching. Um, I am, I, I, I feel very much confident that this platform will continue to exist and to support you and, and to be with you. Uh, hopefully that we will have you to um, ease your, 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 your difficulties, the challenges that you are facing uh, during those times. Um, so I also have to say that I, I, we are very grateful to the, uh, to the partnership that we have, you know, between the two UNDP country offices, but actually more importantly, we really appreciate the, the support and the, the, the engagement of our government from Turkey, you know, like a foreign affair, uh, labor and social security. Um, and of course, from Bangladesh is our very, you know, dear partner, the ICT division. So if I would like, if, what I would like to say last year is that um, refugees is a, a, a transboundary uh, problem. And therefore, uh, it needs to, to have a transboundary solution. And, and, and we have been providing you with the platform and you are the solution to the world, but also to your own life. So I am very much in agreement with the sharing that from Kamal who have just said and giving a lot of good advice to our freelancers. I, I, I very much uh, agree with what he, was sa he said. And if I could uh, add one more thing um, to that is that please don't give up. So, you know, uh, you can only be successful when you are courageous enough and ready enough to fail. So if, if the first time, if the second time, you know, you, you get challenges, you need to keep moving. You need to keep going and trying to, 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 to improve yourself um, every day. And then, and, then, and then I think that the results, the better results will, will always be finally be with you. So that is um, the only message that I would like to, to, to leave you with. And, and I wish you all the very best, uh, best, best wishes. And, and please stay safe during this uh, COVID time. And, 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 and as a UNDP, uh, we stand by you and we will support you in whatever way we can. So your livelihood, your safety, uh, your um, happiness is also the source of our satisfaction, uh, job satisfaction. So, so, so we are here to, to, be, to continue this journey with you. Thank you so much and, and over to you. Thank you, Ms. Vanon. It's quite a strong message that you give to all refugees, not only in Turkey and Bangladesh, but all over the world. Uh, so uh, this is this will be our final session, which will be the Q and A session. Uh, and I have I see dozens of questions over there. So I'll give the floor to Jami for this difficult task <laughs> to cover the questions. <laughs> we will be also helping you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, will there be uh, directly questions directed from participants, or will the the questions be, uh, you know, written down somewhere so that I can answer them one by one? Maybe. Uh, hi, I already covered some of the questions uh, who were written in the uh, chat. Uh, but the participants who couldn't get an answer for their questions uh, can speak up for their questions. I, I see a couple of hands. If you want, we can uh, maybe start. Uh, Ayman Abdul Baki, could you uh, unmute yourself and ask your questions? Uh, good afternoon, and thank you for this uh, webinar. Uh, I would like to know what is the first step uh, to join uh, the platform and register there? Uh, 
Okay, uh, Imame, thank you for your question. Uh, we have a tutorial video on how to use the platform, how to register and use the platform. Uh, in a few days, we will share the tutorial with you uh, via email and uh, you can join the platform following the steps uh, which are indicated in the tutorial video. Thank you. Um, we have Ragit Saka. No. Yes, yes, Naam. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I want... uh, yes, hello. Uh, I would like to say that uh, freelancers uh, are not uh, full time job employees. So, so those freelancers don't uh, take care of writing their CVs for uh, employment. So we hope this uh, uh, platform will facilitate looking for freelancers, uh, which means with, to look only for the job and not for the certificates and the years of experience. For example, if uh, today I have a problem with some el electric devices at home, I want to find someone who fixed that problem. I'm not going to look for someone with uh, uh, years of experience. If I want a dentist, for example, I don't care, uh, for example, the years of experience he has or which university he uh, graduated from and so on and so forth. Because I believe that the CV uh, of a freelancer uh, is a breach of the uh, the notion of independence of a freelancer because the freelancers are not employees. Uh, so the CV for a freelancer is not the most necessary thing to uh, show their skills they have. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Will there be anybody, uh, you know, translating this? Sorry. Uh, uh, someone tells him to go to the English channel. He couldn't hear the English uh, interpretation. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you go to the English. English interpretation, you can actually hear the questions in English. Mm -hmm. uh, thank, uh, by the way, I can maybe cover that question. Thank you uh, for your question and your comment. Uh, yes, uh, preparing a CV and the uh, expressing your area of expertise and your skill is very important to uh, match with the projects, match with the uh, client's demands. Uh, for the uh, profile section of the uh, Dukem platform is very easy to use, so it will ask about uh, all of your uh, information like your education, your like your former projects, like your uh, area of expertise. I think uh, this will make it easy to uh, prepare the CV uh, special for this platform. Also, I would like to add one thing uh, that we are going to introduce the feedback form inside the platform. Uh, so what happens is if you don't find the specialization that you are currently specialized in, in the profile making section. If you think that we need to add a new category to it or new uh, you know, skill to it, please do uh, mention that in the feedback form. Within next couple of days, we will make the feedback form live uh, so that we can add that back into the category. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Hussam Badadi. Uh, hello, can you can you hear me, please? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, uh, first of all, thank you so much for this session. Uh, uh, my name is uh, Hussam Badadi. I'm a graphic designer and art director. I have been working as a freelancer since 2009. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, I, I just got to know know the, the CAN platform uh, yesterday. So I signed up for it uh, now and I noticed that the platform actually offers packages for, uh, for uh, its members. So it's 60, 90 and uh, $120 packages. My question is, as far as I understood actually, how can a platform uh, funded or supported by 
uh, the UN and the Japanese government uh, be something that deals with the situation financially and, and what actually will, will be funded by, by my, my subscription? That's my first question. My second question, please, is um, as the CAN platform, what can I get more uh, than any other freelance platforms like Fiverr, like Freelancer, like uh, 99 Designs, and etc. Since that they have a much wider variety uh, of clients. And uh, thank you. Uh, Hussambi, no. thank you for your question. I think that there is a, a inconvenience. The platform will be free of charge uh, during the uh, implementing fa implementation phase. So we will check it. Uh, so it will be completely free to use. Uh, and for the second question, uh, Jami Bey, could you please? No, thank you. Uh, yes, as I as AJ has already said, the platform will be completely free for use. For freelancers in the implementation phase, the $69 most probably uh, some development modules because the platform is absolutely new. These were not supposed to be live. It uh, went back to you. So there are no packages or anything. I think if you check momentarily, it won't be there. I will ask my development team to check. Uh, on the second question that you said that how this is different, this is different because of the identity part. The the freelancers who can access freelancer.com directly uh, doesn't need to come to Dukan platform. This platform is created for uh, first time freelancers, newcomers who have just come into the freelancing domain who might not have necessary identity or credentials or bank accounts uh, so that they can get access to platforms like Fiverr or Guru or PayPal Hour. Uh, even if you have an ID uh, in cases, there are cases, uh, Fiverr or uh, Guru, you cannot open an account because your ID card or credentials are not uh, supported. The people who have problems with uh, those identities, uh, financial inclusion, those bank account problems or payment problems can come to this platform. We apply for the same job that is out there in uh, Fiverr through this platform. So that is the main uh, utility of this platform. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mm, Abdulalim Dale. Sorry for my pronunciation, by the way. Uh, thank you very much, uh, all the organizers, UNDP Bangladesh or UNDP Turkey, uh, INGEV, uh, and all uh, participants. I would like to ask uh, about uh, dealing with the uh, financial uh, the financial uh, payment, and you said that it will be different. Uh, uh, you said that uh, it will be different from other platforms to help uh, get uh, better wages. So what are the solutions for the better wages uh, from the competition that we have uh, in other platforms uh, in uh, for freelancers? Uh, are there any solutions in that regard? Uh, thank you. Uh, very good question. So in different platforms, what you actually freelancers face is a lot of competition. Competition comes from a lot of crowding uh, in the platform space because this platform is new and it is not directly uh, connecting, uh, you know, one job with one uh, direct freelancer. Rather, it is helping the freelancers to get access to that particular work by corporate. Uh, I think it will be beneficial in uh, 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 financially. This is one. Number two, there are options in this platform where uh, different job providers or IT companies or big corporates or businesses can directly post their advertisements here. What is happening in other platforms like Fiverr and uh, existing market platforms, even posting jobs as a, as a company uh, requires some fees. Uh, right now, this platform is uh, completely free on both ends. So there are no uh, you know, charges that we are 
putting on top of uh, uh, companies. So that particular revenue actually comes back to the freelancers. So their rates and their uh, processes, uh, uh, they will get more benefit. This is what we believe. Thank you. Thank you, Jami. Uh, Ahmed Mohammed Ali. Merhabalar efendim. Hello, thank you very much, everybody. My name is Ahmed Mohammed Ali. I'm from Syria. I work. Uh, I am studying mechatronic engineering at Karabük University, Turkey. So when we offer services like programming services, when the client doesn't like what we have submitted. Um, and when the client says, I don't like it, I don't want to pay. How can I be assured? Because I mean, I have worked, I have submitted something and the client says, I don't like it, I don't want to pay. How can we have our rights secured on both sides, both on the client side and on the freelancer side? What can be done in such a case? Thank you, thank you for that question. Uh, actually, we are introducing an option called escrow. And in escrow option, what happens is the client pays for the work uh, beforehand, before the work is submitted. And the money is with the payment gateway. In our case, either it will be with Dukan platform or with remote. Now, if any dispute arises that you have submitted the work as per the client's uh, uh, you know, instructions and the client is not paying you, then the because the money is already with the platform, then you will get paid. And if uh, the dispute says that the client was right, uh, you have not uh, you know uh, delivered as per what client has asked, then the money will be given back to the client. So this is called a middleware escrow platform. Now this we have already developed this platform inside uh, Dukan, but the problem is when we are you are working with uh, work which is coming from freelancer and guru and other places. If escrow is not enabled in freelancer or guru and other platform, then you will not get access to access to this security. Currently, the work that will directly come to this platform will have this security. But we are working with other partners to see how we can provide this security for both the parties. So we are working on it and it is called an escrow service. It is already available within the platform, but it does not work with uh, you know, jobs that came from guru or freelancer, which doesn't have escrow built in. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Ahmed Mohammed Ali. Hello, in this platform, uh, I mean, uh, what are the types of jobs? Only translation jobs and IT jobs, or will there be other types of jobs posted on this platform as well? Thank you for your question. There will be many type of jobs in this platform. So translation, IT, those are there but graphic designing and other jobs will also be there. But you have to understand one thing that this platform will only host digital jobs. That means work that you can submit or work that you can do online and work that you can submit digitally. Uh, there will not be any physical work uh, posted in this platform. Thank you. Thank you, Jami. Zerife Gökdoğan. Assalamu alaikum. How uh, we can work through this platform? I think uh, we. Yeah. yeah. We, we have Can already we... covered. <laughs> yes. uh, please check your emails in uh, two or three days, right? Uh, AJ, we will send a tutorial on how to use uh, the platform in very detailed way, both in uh, English, Turkish, and Arabic. 
so uh, you will uh, have the chance to uh, get registered. You, you are, you can also right now register. Uh, you can check the check, uh, chat box. We also share the uh, the link for the platform. Um, Omar Farhan. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. Thank you very much for your efforts. I have two questions. The first one is about people who are still living in Syria. How can they make use of this platform and how can they get the payments if they found work through the uh, uh, the platform uh, as they are still in Syria? Uh, the second question is, uh, how much uh, percentage will the platform take from the freelancers after they receive the payment or they receive the, uh, the job? Thank you. Thank you. To answer your first question is, currently this platform is designed for people who are in geographical location within Turkey. It is not uh, designed to be uh, uh, to work with people who are still in Syria. The reason is uh, there are a lot of sanctions and um, monetary restrictions uh, to uh, which are uh, barring international companies or companies to directly send funds to Syria. And we are facing the same problem. So we are trying to find different methods, how we can work around that. But it, uh, we are working on it. We haven't solved it yet for people who are still in Syria. On the second question, uh, where you have asked that, uh, you know, can you can you repeat the second question again, Mr. Omar? Uh, he asked uh, how much percentage the platform ah, right. is going to take right. from right. the freelancers after they receive the right. money and the job. Thank you, thank you. So the platform is not, uh, uh, not charging anything uh, uh, to the freelancer. However, you have to understand that the money transfer process itself has some charges. So for example, the remote platform or gateway we are using, uh, uh, we are using uh, is for repatriating the money. So remote has some charges built in. So those charges will be deducted uh, uh, for, uh, for any transaction. So it depends. It is starts from as low as 2%, it goes, uh, upwards up to up to 10 percent so it, it depends on the amount of work the size of the transaction a lot of lot of it so you can log into remote uh, remote uh, website itself rimwt and you can get a price chart of how much is going to get deducted thank you thank you jamie I will just add the remote also offers 30% uh, discounts for DeepCam platform, only for DeepCam uh, freelancers. I will just uh, want you to add this. Okay. Yes, uh, Saleh. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Mark Yusra Mohammed Ahmed Al Saleh. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, I'm Yusra from Syria and I'm living in Turkey. My project is in uh, alternative medicine, but uh, what I want to understand from you, can I be part of this project? But because my work needs money. So are you going to help me or do I need to provide the capital from my own? Thank you for your question. With this platform, there is no uh, scope for providing any capital right now. However, uh, as Ms. Eze has already said, that we are working on another platform, which is a e-commerce based platform uh, for uh, displaced people or refugee like you to, uh, uh, to trade uh, online. And most probably in that platform, we will try to connect financing uh, organizations as well, uh, who can extend loans and other benefits to respondents. 
but this dukan platform uh, for digital work there, there are no facilities for financing right now uh rashid khan khan <laughs> sorry for sorry for my uh, hello uh, uh, i'm rashid khan khan founder of the technologies in machine technology uh, i have uh, two questions uh, my first question uh, is about uh, uh, my first my first question is about uh, uh, taxes that i want to uh, if i uh, hire a freelancer from you uh, uh, from your platform. My second question is about the organization of uh, EBIM. Uh, if I uh, hire, also if I hire a uh, uh, freelancer from your platform. Thanks a lot. I, I have not, I could not hear your question. Uh, it, did not get completed. So, Jambe, do you want me to get this? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Sure. So, uh, the tax issue is uh, uh, currently we, uh, we have uh, had a so meeting I, uh, with the... Uh, Hi, so can I, you hear? Now, can you speak me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, I'm founder of uh, Different Technologies in Mercy Tikabat. I have two questions. My first question is about uh, what uh, must I be uh, taxes uh, uh, for if I hire a uh, freelancer from your platform. My second question is uh, how can I, I organize uh, that bill if I if I hire uh, a freelancer from your platform? Thanks. Uh, I think Jisan. Uh, if you can answer these two questions. Yes, be sure. So uh, you can uh, follow the ideal process. You can uh, sanction uh, the, uh, the fixed amount of tax and pay to the government yes. uh, once you have uh, get any services uh, from this platform. Though uh, there is no clear uh, regulation for the digital uh, service and the tax uh, currently in Turkey, so still, if you want to uh, pay, you can pay directly to the government uh, uh, according to the percentage uh, you have, you, you will uh, pay in this platform. Yeah. HG, okay. do you like to add anything? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, this, um, the, the startup that we are working uh, called Remo Remote will uh, issue the invoice. So you will uh, show it as both uh, your expenditure and also you can uh, pay your taxes uh, through this uh, invoice. I mean, there, there won't be any additional taxes or anything else other than you need to pay, I mean, while receiving services. Uh, for example, 20% uh, uh, tax, uh, income tax, and deliver the fee. No, this is, uh, this is for the, the, the freelancer side, not the client side, actually. For the freelancers, everybody is responsible to claim uh, his or her income to the Turkish government. But it's a self-claiming. Okay. Uh, but for the client side, for the enterprises, um, you actually pay what you uh, are taxed in the invoices. Yeah. Yes, I Yes. <laughs> You have another question, I think. Huh? Okay, okay, we are okay. Um, you muted yourself. Uh, uh, last two questions. Uh, <laughs> thank you for your interest, by the way. It's quite uh, interesting and impressive. Um, we have Hadi Omari, right? Yes, thank you. Um, Maybe, uh, maybe that my question is covered before, but I uh, repeat it. So I will ask about the cash. If uh, can we have cash in Turkey? Maybe if you have an office that maybe make that payment uh, more easy. Hmm. <clears throat> I did not get that question. Uh, you, you, want, you want to receive your payment in cash? 
not through the, the payment channel. So it's, I mean, it won't be possible for our platform, I think. No, I mean, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> no, the platform yeah. that currently so, does not support cash. Uh, in future, although, although in future, the way we are trying to do it uh, is we are trying to uh, uh, create a prepaid card, uh, uh, a prepaid card which you can use on your ATM. So in future, what you can do is the money will come to that card and you can just take cash out from the ATM. So we are currently working on that. It is still not available in the platform, but in future it will be available. Uh, the card version, but cash is not supported. Okay. It's supported only by credit, maybe. Supported only by? Only by credit. I no. asked you. That for, it's it's supported now for credit. So I'm maybe I ask another question because I received, for example, from Fiverr, in 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 debt issue. Uh, actually, uh, I just can use that money only in uh, pay by internet. I ha don't have cash, so I, I don't have uh, a few payment gateway work, something like that. Thank you. I, a special question, my question is Okay, uh, so my question is, when I receive the payments, will will I receive them uh, in credit? Can I cash them out when I receive the uh, the transfer, or are they going to be in credit that I can use only to uh, buy things online? Oh, uh, you can transfer it out in cash, of course. It's not credit that you can only buy online. Uh, when the money comes, that is actual money. So it's, it's not just credit for you to spend online. Uh, you can cash it out from your account. Uh, you can cash it out from any ATMs uh, or your bank account. You can directly take the cash out. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. And final one, Ari Labadi. Sorry. My question is, uh, because uh, it is difficult to make a transfers to Syria. So if we have someone who goes back and forth between Turkey and Syria, and he has a bank account in Turkey, uh, can he or she still work uh, through the platform? If you if you have a bank account in Turkey, you, you can use the platform. That is not an issue. Okay. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much for all your questions and interest. Uh, we hope to see you in, in our platform as well. Um, it will be uh, fully launched uh, very soon. Uh, and please uh, check your emails and any sort of uh, wait for our uh, from news from our site uh, regarding the platform. I would like to thank all UNDP colleagues, um, all our speakers, uh, for their contribution uh, to share their experiences and insight. It's obvious that this freelance uh, market uh, will provide more opportunities in the near future as well. Uh, and our aim is to actually create new jobs for refugees, uh, for all displaced people uh, all around the world as UNDP and to leave no one behind. Uh, thank you for join, joining us again um, the, the, to the event that we have actually organized in the framework of the 20th June World Refugee Day. Thank you very much. And please do not give up. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for organizing a wonderful event. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you very much. Shukran. Yami, Gisan, can you just stay for two minutes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can.
tercümanlarımız by the way again I forgot to thank all our interpreters thank you very much <laughs> for all your contributions sorry I always forget about it Ezgi Hanım katılımcıları ben waiting room'a yönlendiriyorum çıkmayanları ha, tamam tamamdır teşekkür ederiz Güzel, teşekkürler e,